In this video, we are going to talk about positioning elements on your page using the class ID attribute and the float property. By positioning elements, I mean ensuring that your layout depicts the way that you really want it to look. So you can have things on the right or the left, um, basically wherever you would like them to appear on the page, we have the ability to uh, code that. Now, in order to um, prepare for this video, I'd like you to have completed the reading on class and ID attributes and the floats for today. Uh, I'd also like you to have open the floating, um, responsive floating document that is uh, linked off of the homework for today. Uh, you'll also need to have your, um, your web page up, okay, obviously, um, Firezilla running, and also your main that CSS and your portfolio.html documents open in brackets. Now I want to take a quick look at the assignment, the responsive accessible portfolio assignment. And you'll notice that one of the requirements for the assignment is that the computer screen size, at the 1024 pixel size, the portfolio items must appear side by side. That is, one must be on the left and one must be on the right. Right now, we have our portfolio items on our page, but they are pretty much one on top of the other. Some of you have more than two at this moment, uh, but if there, those of you with two, it's perfectly fine. Uh, one, that's all is required at this time. Uh, one on the bottom, one on the top. Okay, and then we have a bit of other information uh, on the page. And hopefully you've been able to get your fonts to show up and some of your margins and positioning uh, by now. Uh, but what we'd like them to appear is side by side. Uh, and by side by side, I mean something that looks a little bit like this. And the dark blue is the browser window. And we can do a little sketch. Um, and I would love it if you did a little sketch for your page to help you visualize how you want things to appear. Uh, this is a very basic sketch where it puts things side by side. Um, and each box will represent um, a various HTML element that you have on your page. So for example, uh, this one here is my H1, or my header, my main heading. I then have my uh, H sections. This orange represents my sections, my left section, my right section, uh, and they close. So if you'll recall, when we come over to our HTML, we do have our H1 over here. And then when I'm starting my portfolio items, um, I start up with my sections. Okay, so this sketch is a pretty simplified version of what we're seeing on the page. Uh, so this would be our one section on the left, uh, one section on, on the right. Then I also have my uh, H3s on our page. So this would be our portfolio item titles. You'll notice I've left out the H2 uh, from the homework that we've been doing uh, just to simplify the sketch a little bit. Uh, this purple box is our figure and our image on the page. And then this blue box uh, is our paragraphs and our lists. All right. And if you look, go back to our code, uh, this is pretty much what we have going on over here. We've got our H3s. Of course, there's the header boxes around them. I didn't include that in the sketches. But we have our figures, and then we have our, our ULs. And uh, some of you will have paragraphs. I've asked you to have some paragraphs in there as well. Um, so, uh, that, and then it's repeated down the page. We have our header, I'm sorry, we have our H section, we have our H3s, we have our figures. Uh, many of you have paragraphs, and then you have lists uh, as well. So we represent these things um, on the page like that. Uh, now, the question becomes, how do we get things to go side by side? How do we make them appear so that even though we have sections, here that are coded just as section, how do we make one appear in one place and one appear someplace else? That is, how do you 
provide them with unique representation or coding so that they behave differently uh, when they are on when they are on the page. And we do this using our class and ID attributes. Okay. Class and ID attributes. These are used to distinguish elements in our code from the, each other. Okay, so what, how distinguishing one section from another section, one figure from another figure, one paragraph from another paragraph, one list from another list. Any HTML um, element can have the class or ID attribute applied to it. Okay, we're going to be focusing right now on the section, but it can headers can have class and IDs applied to it. Figures can have class and ID applied to it. Image can have class ID applied to it. Paragraph, UL, LI, anything on the page except for the body okay, and the HTML tags. Uh, everything else can have class and ID attributes. Now they behave very similarly, class and ID, but they are used in different ways. And the distinguishing factor is how often you are going to be using that particular element and attribute on the page. So for example, classes can be used many times on the page. So if you're going to be using, for example, a class to position something on the left, and multiple times, let's say you have six portfolio items and you're going to duplicate this setting, this structure, left, right, left, right, left, right, down your screen, you're going to be using that left positioning class quite a bit. Okay? So you're going to style this one with a class. Uh, IDs can only be used once. So this is for major structural elements that are minor little things that are only used one time and that's just how it's done. I'm not, I don't completely understand or remember why the, the, the creators of HTML and CSS did this, uh, but this is just something you just have to remember. Uh, in order to be coding with web standards, we need to make sure that class is used one time, I mean class can be used multiple times, and ID is only used once. So the question becomes, how do we represent this in the code? Especially, how does it represent it in HTML, and how is it going to look in our CSS, as we know that these are not always looking exactly the same. So let's take a look. So when we are... Oops. Composing our class or IDs in HTML, we write out class equals and then we name it. Now we can name this anything we want it to be. You can name it trousers, you can name it uh, football, you can name it any, whatever word you want uh, it to be. Uh, but when we do name, we name in a way that is related to what we want that element to do. So we're gonna make it semantic. Uh, we make the names meaningful. We don't just use random words to describe our classes and our IDs, uh, because then when we're doing our coding, it will be virtually impossible to remember what everything is. But when we name them appropriately, we name them meaningfully, um, we are able to effectively remember what it is that we were doing. So I'm going to fix this up over here. Typo. Name. Everything's all lowercase, right? All the time. So we write that out. Class equals blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, in the CSS for our, the way that we represent, the way that we represent the class is with a period. Okay period name. And the way that we represent the ID is with the pound sign, or what we now call a hashtag sign. Okay. So this means class, 
and this means ID. It would be very nice if we would just be able to write class in our CSS document and write ID in our CSS document, but we cannot. <laughs> we have to use this little period and we have to use this little ID uh, when we're doing this. And this is how it looks. For example, in my HTML, this is our HTML right here, I would write in section class equals left, or if I was doing positioning the right one, I would do section class equals right, um, and then I close that section down at the bottom. And then in the CSS, I would write section dot left, or I would do section dot right. And again, I'm just using this section as an example here because we're going to be positioning our sections. And that will move everything around on our page. Okay. So again, the class is basically represented as a period in our CSS, and the ID is represented as a pound sign. Now, the reason I'm using class here and not ID is because I am anticipating that in the future I'm going to have more portfolio items that I might want to have on a left and a right side. And since I can use class many times, I'm choosing to use the class. If I was only using this section, this positioning something once on the page, I would have used uh, it, the ID. So the question then becomes, uh, how do we ensure that one thing is going to be one place and the other thing is going to be on another place. That is, how is something going to show up on the left-hand side of the screen or in the left-hand area? And how will something, for example, show up on the right-hand area? And we do that using something called floats. We do that positioning using floats. Floating left or right. Let's make a new layer here. And you can see that right here, section dot left, this is just what we were working on earlier, just a second ago. I wrote that out, section dot left, and I have also my section dot right uh, in my CSS. Now, floats can be on the left or the right for our purposes. There are, as you'll see in the book, a couple other um, ways that they can be represented. Um, none, which we might use at some point, and inherit, which we probably won't be using at all. So for now, we want to think about left and right because we're putting one thing on the left-hand side and we're putting another on the right-hand side. And so here we're going to have, we do section.left, and because it's the left, we float left. Simple. That will position something on the left-hand side. Now we also need to give that element a width. Without a width, uh, it will just display huge, and uh, we uh, don't want that to actually happen. Um, we are giving this a width of 48%. And that's because we basically want our elements to be one on one side and one on the other side. And when you split 100% in two, you get 50, right? 50%. Uh, but we want to give us a little bit of a wiggle room and a little space between the two sides, left and right. So we guess at about 48%. If you want to make yours 49% or 46%, it's up to you. 48% uh, is just a good sort of starting point when we're positioning things side by side because it that equals 96%, um, and that little 4% little space between the two elements is, is really useful. Now, floats are an important part of CSS, uh, but interestingly enough, when they designed them, they made them behave very strangely. Uh, so if you don't have a line called over, auto in there, the float 
won't actually behave properly. You won't extend to include all of the material that's in all the content, I'm sorry, that is inside of it. It will essentially render as one pixel high. It's a strange bug in the system. Um, and the way that we've overcome that is by adding this line, overflow auto. And what that basically tells the browser is show everything that's in this the, the, the box that is being floated um, so that everything appears. It's a strange little hack that we need to do uh, whenever you are using a float. So, um, and we're going to be using floats quite a bit throughout the, the, the rest of our coding as we're positioning uh, one thing or another on our page. So move on to the next video where I'm going to show you how to implement uh, this code uh, so that you are able to have your, your portfolio items displayed on the left-hand side of the page uh, and on the right-hand side of the page. See you then.